why. Like I said, a big topic. So I think where we generally see cost in the first place in counterpoint is we always see it in the um, item window, the item screen. So we've got our last cost field there. And a lot of times I find that people just assume that that's the cost of the product throughout the system. Well, actually that's a little deceiving because that cost, last cost on the item screen, is actually the last cost that it had it posted receiving for from any location. So if you have multiple locations and they're all uh, posting receivings for that same item and they're receiving it at different costs, that last cost field on the item screen is always going to show the last posted received cost for that item. So you may have many locations and those locations all may have different costs for the product. So if you're familiar with looking at CounterPoint and you have multiple locations, you know that you have an inventory record for each inventory location. So here I'm using our standard um, demo golf database and we have three locations. We have East and Main and Storage. And so here in the screen, you can see that the last cost in East is zero. They've never received it. Last cost in Main is $174.99 and last cost in storage is $139.99. They all received it at a different cost. But that item screen just shows the last one, which was the $174.99. So then we also have average cost. So average cost is really the most important cost in the system. And so we're going to spend a little time on this. So counterpoint costs our inventory with the average cost method, sometimes called perpetual average cost, sometimes weighted average cost. But what that does is it's taking um, all of the units of that product that you have based on all of the received costs of what you have, and it's creating a running average cost for that item. So let's say we have 10 in stock at $10 and we receive 10 at $20 we're actually going to have 20 at $15. So characteristics of that average cost method, um, that average cost changes whenever new inventory is added. So generally in counterpoint, that would be when it was received, but it can also be um, changed by some other transactions in the system as well. But generally we see the main change when we do receiving. Um, and then also that cost of goods is based on the average cost at the time of the sale, which CounterPoint does do. One of the reasons why it's important because it is our um, cost of goods sold. And so we'll, I think we'll share the slide deck at the end. So you'll be able to refer back to these examples for the calculation. So again, because we have the different location records and different receivings and different costs from the receivings, different costs from maybe transfers of an item from one location to another are carrying an average cost. And that will all um, calculate together into a new average cost for a receiving location. Um, here we've got the average cost of 166 for East, 170 or one, excuse me, yeah, 174.99 for Maine, and then the 167.68 for the storage location. So different average cost in each of those locations. Average cost is calculated by the system too. That is not something that you can get in and manually change. It is always updated by the system. It's one of the few fields in the system you cannot actually go in and open up and change. So a few things about the average cost. Like I said, it's a running perpetual average cost and the system calculates it per location. Um, because it is what we call the accounting cost in the system, it cannot be manually changed. And because it's the accounting cost, it's very important that it remains correct. So as we go through this, we'll talk a little bit about a few methods to correct in case it gets um, to be incorrect. Um, this is the default inventory cost used throughout the system. There are other places that we can use get reporting, 
on last cost and standard cost and other costs, but it is the default cost that's used if you do an adjustment or a transfer um, or different kinds of inventory activities. It's used as the cost of goods sold in sales transactions. And so therefore it is used as um, the cost in figuring the sales margin on all of your sales. So again, one more reason it's important, it's correct because that is affecting your margin and your margin reporting. And then we're gonna talk about this a little bit more, but if an item sells into the negative, then the last average cost, which is a kind of a hidden field on the counterpoint face, but it's in the tables in the counterpoint database, the last average cost is used for the item cost of goods sold. And then when we receive into the positive, then we get into um, a correction for that, which I'll talk about in a minute. Again, average cost is the most important cost in the system, that it be correct. Then we also have standard cost. And again, standard cost is unique to each location. And standard cost is, it's a cost accounting method that we don't use too much in retail. Um, sometimes it's used in manufacturing, but it's a predetermined cost for the item that's used to measure variances. So you might want to look at um, a standard cost versus what your average cost or last cost is. Or some places use standard cost for um, commission calculation. If salespeople get uh, commissioned on like an amount selling above standard or margin. So it's a cost that we keep in counterpoint, but it's not frequently used by retailers. It certainly can be, but not frequently. So when we set up a new inventory item, um, this is where we set our beginning default cost. So as you're adding all of your fields in a new inventory item, this last cost field is open. And so if you enter what your current cost for that item is when you're setting up that new item, then that becomes the initial cost for the last average and standard cost for every location. It's also used as the initial cost for the vendor item record that's created when we save this new item. So it's important that when you're setting up a new item that you do put something in this cost field. Um, otherwise, your items start out with a zero cost. And so if you start selling those items before you receive them, you're selling into the negative, or even if, even if you have quantity and it's zero, um, then you're gonna show 100% margin and your items are gonna show no cost of goods sold and no inventory will be relieved from your inventory value in the beginning until you start actually receiving goods. So it's just really important to start to put something into that last cost field in the beginning so that you have a starting cost everywhere in the system. Once you save that new record, this last cost field on the item screen becomes uh, locked and you can't change it. Even if you can um, do protected changes, you cannot unlock that field on the item screen, but you could actually go into the inventory records and you could manually change the last cost and the standard cost. Again, you cannot change the average cost because that's calculated by the system. Also note that if you do make changes to any of those fields, it's only going to change it for transactions going forward. It's not going to change it for any historical transactions. So that's how we set our cost for a new inventory item. So if we're gonna specify a default cost for our non-inventory items, um, the difference between inventory and non-inventory are that inventory items carry a cost and a quantity on hand. Non-inventory items do not carry a quantity on hand, but they do carry a cost. So in the beginning, we have, when we set up the item, we have an opportunity here to enter in a cost of goods percentage and even a last cost figure for the item. And then that serves as your, um, like your cost of goods sold basically because we don't have quantity on hand, so there's no inventory value to it. So this is basically a cost of goods sold figure. Again, if you change this after 
you've initially set up the item, it's not going to change the cost in any transactions that you do um, or that were done in the past, just in transactions going forward. So then we also have yet another cost, the vendor item cost. So again, when we set up our brand new item, we set up our default costs and we have put a vendor in our initial inventory record. When you save that initial item or the initial item record, excuse me, when you save that initial item record, it's going to create the vendor item record underneath it. And so that, that um, beginning default cost is going to become the beginning default cost for the vendor item record. But you may purchase this item in a different unit than our initial unit. So let's say we set up our item and we set it up with a, um, a stocking unit of each. But maybe we have to purchase that from the vendor in a dozen. So this particular product, I've gone into the vendor item record. I have set the purchasing unit as the dozen. And then my unit cost for the dozen from the vendor is 21.1644. So when I purchase it, that will be the cost that shows up on the purchase order. When I receive it, if I receive it at that cost, it's going to take that dozen cost divided by 12 and give you the each cost for the stocking unit. So that's our vendor item cost. That you can manually change at any point. That's not a protected field. And there's also a setting in purchase and control that will allow you to have the system automatically update that vendor item cost based on either posting a purchase order or posting a receiver um, or both. So if you want the system to update it for you, you can make that setting. Then we have the ability to do what is called landed cost. So what landed cost does is it takes any miscellaneous charges, like for example, you might have shipping charges or you might have packaging charges or you might have um, gasoline charges or setup fees for a logo or things like that, that you want to roll that all into the actual cost of the product. So that's what is called landed cost. And we have, in purchasing, we have the ability to set five miscellaneous charges for five different types of those kind of charges like I just mentioned. And then for each of those miscellaneous charges, you have the ability to decide whether or not you want to include those in the cost. We have the checkbox over on the right. It says include in the cost. And so if you check that, whatever miscellaneous charge that is, and you add that on the receiver, it's going to distribute that miscellaneous charge, whatever it is, throughout all of the units that are on that receiving document. And you have the ability to tell the system whether to distribute that cost by either the weight, the quantity received, the cost, or the cube of all of the items that are on that receiving document. So you could have five miscellaneous charges, but perhaps you only want one of those factored into the landed cost. Well, then you would only check including cost on the one miscellaneous charge. So if you do that, then those costs that you've decided you're going to include in the, in the cost of the product become part of the inventory value and they're no longer expensed. Like very often a freight charge is an expense rather than part of the inventory. So you just need to be aware that that will become part of the inventory value, factors into the average cost of the item, and then um, the, the general ledger distributions of that also go to the inventory account. So it becomes part of the inventory instead of expense. If you are a business that sells items that are serialized and you want to track by serial number, 
counterpoint has a serial number costing option or serial number tracking option. And if you have that option, then uh, for example, if you're selling televisions and you want to track each television that you receive and each television that you sell by serial number, you would need that serial number option. If you have the serial option, you have the choice to do your costing by the actual unit cost of each serialized item, or you can um, use the item average cost either way. And so if you do serial actual costing, then whatever you pay for that individual unit will be the cost of that individual unit forever. There's no averaging of that because it's just the one unit. And that average cost would just um, shake them all up and create one average cost, just like normal. Here's a big topic that causes a massive amount of confusion throughout CounterPoint. Um, and particularly if you are using the general ledger distributions and sending information to your accounting system. Um, this is called cost correction. And so very often you will receive it, uh, you'll see it on your distribution reports, you'll see it on uh, receiving documents, and it's a huge point of confusion. So what cost correction is, is it, we see it used when your quantity on hand goes into the negative. So let's say you're going to sell something and you're selling into the negative. I mentioned earlier that we have a field in the database called last average cost. So if you're selling into the negative, you don't have any quantity on hand that carries an actual average cost. So the system looks at that average cost and it uses what the assumed cost is at the time of sale when you're going to the negative so that you have a uh, cost of goods sold figure and, and a relief of your inventory figure. So then when you receive that product in, um, the cost correction is made, which is the difference between the assumed average cost that you sold the product for and the actual cost that you received the product for. And then that goes through the GL and it updates your cost of goods sold figure and it updates your, um, your inventory value as well. So just as a, as a quick example, if an item sells into the negative with a, with a last average cost of a dollar and then you receive it in at a dollar 25, you're going to have that 25 cent difference between those two costs that goes to cost correction. And you set the cost correction general ledger account in the um, the inventory um, account. And then over here on the right, we've got uh, another example. I did this this morning so I could show a little more of a calculation. So. This particular item, it was a uh, driver, and I started the day with four on hand, or I sold, I started the day, oh, I put the wrong thing there. Um, I sold, I started the day with one on hand, so that should be one on the slide. I sold four, which brought me down to a negative three quantity on hand, and each of those four sold at 161.29 cost. So then I received in, a quantity at a cost of $150 each. And so the difference per club in cost was $11.29. So the cost correction there, that was the difference between what it was sold for, $161.29, and what it was received for, for $150. I've got that $11.29 per club times the three clubs, gives me a cost correction of $33.87. So you can see up on the top, uh, that first screenshot at the top is the inventory, inventory history report. And I'm going to show you that in a minute too. But that shows the cost correction there when I did that receiving of that 3387. And then down at the bottom, it's the screenshot of the distribution report showing that cost correction of 3387 going to the account that we specified for that. Quite confusing. 
but that is, but CounterPoint does make sure that your um, cost of goods and your inventory at the GL level stay correct with that. Another topic that sometimes is um, surprising to people is that once you post a receiver, you have the ability to go back and correct the cost that you have entered on the receiver with a purchase adjustment, purchasing adjustment. And so those are located on the purchasing menu. And so if you have received, uh, posted and received items with an incorrect cost, or missed putting in miscellaneous charges, or you want to change miscellaneous charges from a poster, posted receiver, you can do that with a purchase adjustment. So maybe you received something at $100 and it should have been received at $10 or vice versa. That lets you open up that receiver, enter in that new cost, enter in miscellaneous charges if you need to, and repost it. So once you repost it, it's going to, again, from the accounting level, go back and change your inventory account for merchandise still in stock and the cost of goods sold account for merchandise that's already been sold for the discrepancy in what you actually received it for versus this new posted cost that you have put in. So that's going to fix it at the GL level. So first of all, you would do that, you would fix it with your purchase adjustment. However, that does not go in and update the um, average cost of the inventory items. And the, really the only way to change the average cost of the inventory items themselves is through a series of adjustments. And so if you need to change the average cost of your whole quantity on hand for the item, then you need to do two inventory adjustments. You would adjust out the entire quantity at the bad cost, which on the adjustment screen will have a checkbox for the accounting cost. You wanna leave that checked. So you adjust the entire quantity out and you post that adjustment. Then you adjust the entire quantity on hand back in at the correct cost and post that. And then your average cost for that item for that location will be correct. Before you start that series of adjustments, you need to make sure that everything else has been posted. So your sales have been posted, any open adjustments, receivings, transfers, anything needs to be adjusted so your entire quantity on hand is being fixed. So that's a little bit of a process there, but um, I, I loop that adjustment thing in with fixing your cost based on a purchase adjustment, but that average cost correction process can be done um, without being associated with the purchase adjustment if you just need to fix average cost. And then when you do that, you're gonna have um, general ledger entries that go to the inventory account to change that value as well. Um, then I just wanted to point out, if you do find you have costing issues related to your average cost primarily, the best report to use to figure out what happened, why and how it happened, is to look at the inventory history report. And that's under um, inventory reports and inventory history. And you can then specify the items, specify date range, and you can, I like to sort it in date, order so you can see what happened to it in the order that it happened. And so you can see over here on the left, it tells you every kind of transaction that's happened. And then over here on the right, the second column from the right, it's showing you the unit cost that was used for that um, individual transaction. So you can go down through here and you can see that um, these were adjusted and transferred at 267.69. And then we did a receiving for $175. So when that happens, that's going to affect your average cost. And then there was a transfer that happened and you know all these different things at different costs that calculate into the final average cost of that product. So if you look at this and you can see maybe this 175 shows 1,750, 
Well, then in that case, you would know that that particular receiving is the problem. And that's why your average cost is off. And then you know how to uh, back into that and fix it. This report is also really helpful if you've got big quantity discrepancies. Again, you can look through this and you can run through all the quantities that quantity of the transactions that have happened and, um, and see where you've gone wrong there. So this is a great report. If you're an inventory manager, it's a really valuable report. Thanks, Karen. That's it? That's all you wanted to go? That was a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah. no, it took way longer than I thought it was, sorry. <laughs> no, I think, I think it was all good information, but I can see how people can forget certain little things or not know about different things. So that was great, thank you. Steve asks, sounds like FIFO, FIFO or LIFO. Oh, FIFO. FIFO and LIFO are not supported. FIFO and LIFO, cost FIFO. methods are not available. Yep. Correct, okay. Uh, Carolyn asks, is there any way to modify the inventory history report to include the purchase order number? Yes. I mean, yes, generally that would take a modification to the crystal report. Um, but those are modifications that if you have crystal reports and are comfortable with it, you can make yourself, or that's something that we frequently do is modify those reports for customers. But yes, that could be done. Thank you everybody for attending. Hope it was helpful.